Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Are you struggling to find your way into becoming a Go developer? If so, then this video is for you. So consider this video your guide on your journey to mastering Go. I have created a list of steps and key points that will help you with the skills and confidence to call yourself a Go developer. So with that note, let's start. So according to Stack Overflow Developer Survey, uh, Golang is one of the most popular, loved and desired language. So as per the TOB index also, right now it's at 11 position and last year it was 12. So each year it is improving its position. As per the Glassdoor report, a uh, Golang developer in US can have a pay range between 90k to 150k and in some cases it can even reach 200k. So as we can see, uh, as per the 2023 developer survey, the most popular technology Golang is there. And... Uh, with respect to the top 10 technologies, you can see Golang is there. So it is always in the top. So on average, it can have like 90,000 plus. So and with respect to the use cases, you can use Golang in web development, microservices, IoT, blockchain, CLI tools. Golang is very popular for building the CLI tools. Uh, for example, Kubernetes, Hugo, uh, GitHub CLI, all are created in Golang. Uh, then we have the cloud infrastructure cyber security so in cyber security is also uh, it is gaining more and more traction and there are many cyber security firms uh, which is adopting golang then we have the data processing analysis uh, gaming industries also and the distributed systems so to install golang in your system what you just have to do is like come to the go.dev.install then you can simply download and install as per your operating system and to check if it is installed properly just run the go version and it will give you the which version is is installed then you also have the go playground so it is an online editor uh, where you can simply play with it uh, you can simply type your code and simply use the run and select also the version which version you want to run so yeah so if you don't want to install it and if you just want to test it basics of golang you can start with the basic data type so in golang you have int float bool string array and few more then comes the reference data types so in golang you will find few new data types like channel map slices uh, so these are the reference data type like uh, when you will initialize them it returns a pointer instead of a value then learn about variable and constant like how to declare a variable how to declare a constant conditional statements if if else switch so these are the statements available in golang for iteration statement you have only for there is no while and other things so only for is available and for comes with a very iteration statement in golang only for is available there is no while do while kind of stuff only for and you can iterate using two things either use from i equals to zero to the length of the element and you can also use a special keyword called range so the range keyword returns two things uh, first is the integer and another one is the value so it depends on the data type which data type you are using so suppose if you are using uh, if you are iterating over array then it will return the index of the array and the second value is going to the value of an array but if it is a channel then it only returns the value type casting and inference there is no implicit type casting so if suppose if you are uh, assigning an integer value to a float variable then it will throw a compiler error so you have to explicitly convert the integer to a float and then only it will assign export functions so to export a function there is no export keyword or some something like that what you just have to do is like just capitalize the first letter of the function name and it will automatically export it then you can learn about the modules so to initiate a module you can simply use go mod in it so modules are simply used to maintain the dependency so when you will uh, import more and more uh, third party packages so their dependencies like uh, which version you are using and all those stuff so those things are maintained by the modules then the importing the third party packages so you are going to use many packages like reading the environment variables and other stuff so for that you need the third party packages so to import a third party package you use the go get command and then the repository of the, the package the github repository advanced concepts first you have to learn about the functions and the packages in golang everything is packages packages you can consider is the smaller unit in a golang program and uh, then you have concurrency and go routine golang is by design is concurrent language and you have go routines unlike threads go routines are very lightweight 
so what it do is like in one thread it can create n number of goroutines whatever process you are running all process runs inside a goroutine then we have channels so when two goroutines want to communicate with each other they use these channels as a bridge then we have context so you might find it very new uh, compared to other languages so what context give you is like it give you more control over the request or the flow of the program suppose you have a request uh, which you want complete within like 100 milliseconds but it is taking more than 200 milliseconds at that particular time you can create the context uh, suppose if uh, the request crosses the 100 milliseconds it will cancel it so that is a very basic example uh, where you can use the context but the context uh, is basically used to track the complete request and have more control over the complete uh, then we have error handling golang force you to handle all the errors so there is no try catch kind of block there is no try catch final kind of blocks all the functions and everything returns error and you have to handle it explicitly in the beginning you will find it a little bit irritating but with time you'll understand like what is its uh, advantages like it improves the readability and it also gives you the sense like what uh, each function is returning then we have the pointers and memory management then we have the garbage collection so calling take care of the garbage collection but there might be times when you want to tweak some things like uh, how frequently the garbage collection can uh, should run or if you want to delay the garbage collection run to improve the performance and all those things then we have the concurrency pattern so as we know like uh, golang is by by design it is concurrent so it has certain concurrency patterns you should know like the fan in fan out and other the next step is web development so golang has a very powerful built in library called net http for web development uh, apart from this, there are many popular frameworks available like Gorilla Mux, Gen, Chi, uh, the Fiber, and Echo. And each offers very unique features and functionality to the web development. As a beginner, you can start with the Net HTTP and then you can uh, you can try other frameworks like Gorilla Mux, Gen, uh, and Chi. And uh, Gorilla Mux is very similar to Net HTTP, so you'll not find much difference. Coding without proper logging is like uh, sailing without a compass. You may know where you are going, but you will have no idea how you got there or how to navigate back. So logging is very important. Golang has a very good packages with it. Uh, so one is called log, uh, which is built in package and its extension is s log. So both serves very well for almost all the cases, uh, but there are more options available. So Uber's Go app is a very highly customizable logger and it is very fast. Then the other options are loggers and zero log. For testing in Golang, you don't have to rely on any other third-party tools. Its built-in testing package is very good. And for that, you just have to use the testing.t. It is for, for testing. And if you want the assertion functions kind of thing, then you can go for a third-party package called Testify. And then we have the benchmarking. Benchmarking measures the performance of a function or a code snippet. What it do is like uh, it run the function n number of times and then it uh, tells like what is the performance of it like in nanosecond, microsecond and all those things. It is uh, intelligent enough to run that particular function n number of times. Then for debugging we have dwell uh, so you can learn about it. So it is uh, highly customizable and it has plugins available for almost of the IDs like the Visual Studio Code, Goland, NeoVim and Atom and many more. Once your basic fundamentals and everything is completed, now it's time to expand your horizon and learn about the use cases where it can be used. So the very first use case uh, we can going to talk about is like the microservices. Go's lightweight concurrency model, efficient runtime and rich standard library can handle high traffic loads and scale horizontally, which makes it an ideal choice for microservices. Following other topics, uh, you can start with to cover uh, to learn more about the microservices so you can start first with the microservice fundamentals so for that you can go on the martin fowler's website uh, he has a really great content on microservices uh, for all the beginners intermediate and expert level then we have the service discovery model like uh, how it works then uh, for the communication protocols you can learn about the rest apis grpc websocket and there are a few more like the um, webhook and all those things then you have the pub sub model then the messaging queues uh, so for messaging queues you can start with apache kafka and RabbitMQ. so these are the few topics you can start with uh, to enter in the realm of the microservice with golang as we have talked earlier like golang is very popular when it comes to building the command line tools so you can use a cobra library uh, which is very popular and it ha it is used to build the kubernetes the cli uh, github cli and hugo cli 
so you can use that and you can for the practice purpose you can create a cli of note taking uh, password manager where you can generate the password and encrypt it and then recover it also then you can uh, create a to-do list kind of thing or like a task manager thing okay and you can also create a chat application where you will use the web sockets to communicate with another cli application the last part is like projects you can build in go uh, so these are like a few one but uh, there are many more uh, you can explore so the first one you can start with the to do app here you can implement the rest api uh, you can implement uh, uh, implement it using golang with uh, with some kind of database either it can be sql no sql or simply uh, uh, and for the front end you can use the template engine uh, of golang then you can build the grpc service then a cli app uh, chat application containerization of go applications then we have the web scrapper so for web scrapper golang has uh, uh, you can use the net http package and go query package to web scrapping you can create a rate limiter you can also create a web app using the template package using the template html template text and all those things you can explore for the next step what you can do is like you can come to this uh, website called roadmap.sh slash golang it is a really great uh, roadmap you can get for the golang like uh, what are the basics and the basic syntax variable declaration and all what are the data types and with uh, each step uh, what you can do is like once you learn it uh, you can mark it as like completed and all okay and it has its own a uh, little bit of uh, a basic understanding of like both basic definitions and resources uh, which you can learn more about it so these are the things Golang roadmap for 2024 i hope you like this video and please subscribe thank you